Stephen A, we really built this thing up. Was too much made of that whole process? Evidently so. Evidently so. It depends on how you look at it in some people's eyes. Some people will sit up there and say, well, you know what? They never guaranteed the championship or whatever. I want to hear that. Uh, we've been hearing about the process all year long. I picked them to win this series. I didn't know they were going to blow three games in this series. Uh, one was a lopsided matchup in Boston's favor in game one. Another was a lopsided matchup in Philadelphia's favor in game four. But in the end, games two, three, and five, uh, it was pickums. It was down to the Y, and obviously uh, the Philadelphia 76ers proved themselves to be a relatively young team uh, devoid of a surreal playmaker. You've got one in Ben Simmons who's going to be a star in this game eventually, assuming he works on his mid-range jump shot. Uh, but outside of that, you didn't really have any playmakers. But the reason why I say, Max, that it may have been overblown, overhyped, or we made too much of the process is because it was the wrong process we were focused on. We were so busy focused on Philadelphia. We have not spent enough time being focused on that process that has taken place in Boston. Last time I checked, Jason Tate, 19 years old. Last time I checked, Jalen Brown is 21 years of age. Babies. These are two young lines, babies. They're both in the starting lineup. Terry Rogier is only in his third, league, third season in the National Basketball Association. One of the preeminent stars in this game who is, uh, who is a champion, but wasn't even playing in this series and will not be playing in this postseason is Kyrie Irving. He's only 25. And so when I look at it from that perspective and you see the brilliance of Danny Ainge, the brilliant coaching of a Brad Stevens, you see how a veteran like Al Horford have been, has been sprinkled into the equation. You see the kind of things that they put together. Gordon Haywood ultimately will be coming back next season. You're just, and he's only about 27 years of age if I remember correctly. The bottom line is, is that the process, we may have made too much of it because when we talked the process, we talked about Philly, when in fact, it has been proven we should have been talking more about the process that's taking place in Boston. True. Except that in Boston, it's not exactly a process. Boston has just a super shrewd, opportunistic GM who we've seen succeed with all different kinds of scenarios. He has a star player he doesn't want, he flips him. Another star player says, Paul Pierce, I need help. He goes out and maneuvers and gets Garnett and gets Ray Allen. Those guys get a little long in the tooth. He trades them maybe before some people would have liked and robs the Brooklyn Nets of all those picks and then starts building up. In other words, Danny Ainge is a special kind of talent evaluator and basketball mind who's been shrewd, uh, uh, opportunistic and a little bit lucky too. The, you know, a, a little luck plays into it too. He just stacked the deck in his favor because he's the best GM in basketball. I don't know that you can exactly call that a process, but I, I will say this, the process is misconstrued. So no, not too much was made of the process. It's kind of like in baseball when you started hearing money ball. Mm -hmm. People all thought that meant on base percentage mm -hmm. because at the time that's what it meant. Because Moneyball really just meant identifying undervalued commodities. That's what it meant. At the time, on base was undervalued. Then that got valued properly or overvalued. Then other things became undervalued, and that's playing Moneyball. The process really represents here. How do we acquire young, inexpensive talent and also transformational talent? So the Celtics with those draft picks, when you look at the team, the success they're having right now, right. they had a war chest of assets to trade for Kyrie and to trade for Kyrie and guys like that. Mm -hmm. But look at who's balling right now. Uh, Tatum was a third pick. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Marcus Smart was the sixth pick. Mm -hmm. Jalen Brown was the third pick. Mm -hmm. Rozier was a first mid first round pick. Mm -hmm. Those are young, inexpensive assets that they acquired through the draft. Which means it's a process. Which well, means, hold on, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm taking your words. You said, you got it really what the process entails is young talent, right? That you've acquired. Young cheap talent. So, 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 all right, well, I'm, I'm sorry, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and yep, Marcus Smart talent. are not expensive. No doubt. So, again, that means there was a process. No, in here's Boston. the difference. Here's the difference. I didn't say there Danny wasn't a Ainge, difference. Dan I said it's a process. But no, but uh, any, everything's a process well, if you go through it because yeah. you're cheap. But when we refer to the process, what we're referring to in this case mm -hmm. is how do you acquire young, cheap talent? Right. If the Brooklyn Nets are there to be had, and you're opportunistic, you could just grab it and circumvent a lot of the process. Mm -hmm. In the Sixers case, it mm -hmm. took the form of tanking for years yeah. to continue to try to hit with draft picks. It didn't always work. You brought up Okafor the other day. Mm -hmm. Didn't work. Fultz hasn't worked so far. It's, it's still early. Mm -hmm. But Embiid hit. Simmons hit, mm -hmm. if you're continually terrible mm -hmm. and picking toward the top of the draft, you're going to hit on some. Well, that was the main part of the process. Okay, 